my name's Taylor Clark. I um, had farm on my family farm with my wife, my dad, and, and my, my uncle. Um, historically, our farm was um, raised tobacco up until the tobacco buyout in 2004. And we transitioned all of that land that was under heavy tillage with tobacco to continuous no-till. Um, after we had done that for five or six, seven years, we kind of saw the benefit of the land um, getting easy to plant. Some of the places where that were red or um, clay we, that we never got a stand under um, with beans or corn. Um, when, when we were tilling it, in a rotation that that land became some of the the most productive land that we had we got stands and and it actually yielded better than some of the land that was easy to easy to work so it it, it was kind of a normal progression to start thinking about adding cover crops to try to increase organic matter a lot of this and soil that we were growing tobacco on, um, organic matter levels were less than one and a half percent. Some of them would be even less than a percent of organic matter when you took a soil sample. So we were we were trying to wanted to try to use cover crops to help you know retain moisture, um, build some soil organic matter. And and also, we were hoping that the um, cover crops, the rye or triticale that we were using um, after harvest would um, help with a plowed layer that those soils naturally had. Um, when we when we first went to to mainly grain crops and and started no tilling. Um, we did do some um, um, ripping um, with, with a conservation ripper um, when, when we first started, but it, it didn't seem like, you know, when you went back and checked in 18 months, that layer was still there. Um, since, since we started using the cover crops, um, that, that layer is not as pronounced. So uh, I think having that crop growing during the winter when you have some moisture and the roots are able to um, penetrate that, you know, plow layer um, ha has been a benefit. Kind of since we started to cover crops, we've struggled in the fall getting them in after, after harvest because we've had some exceptionally wet fall. Which, which has been kind of frustrating. And, and then in the spring, if it gets wet with the cover crops, you know, it, it takes longer for, for the land to dry out for you to, to go back to plant. But, but we're hoping, you know, that's, that's not normally what we deal with. We usually deal with, you know, not enough soil moisture during the summer. So we're hoping that cover and increasing the organic matter will give us a few more days before in a dry spell before crops the crops go go to stressing as as much and we hope that'll help average out our yields over time. So reason to, to start using cover crops and stick with it is um, when, once we started um, using that we, we noticed that we we didn't have as much um, mass tail to, to control in the spring before planting um, and we, we felt like um, we do have palmer pigweed um, we felt like it was helping suppress that to a certain extent also it gives a little bit more time from planting to when those pigweed emerge and, and we can get back and spray since since we're, we're, we're both, both here trying to do this on a, a part-time basis. One, one thing that I, I have changed since I started using cover crops, the, the fertilizer and lime applications, um, 
especially the fertilizer applications in, in front of the, the crop in the spring, I try to make my P and K applications before um, the cover crop starts to join. And then I, then I don't have um, spread of truck tracks in the field that where they push the cover crop over. And if I'm not planting the same direction, they, they were running. Uh, I had trouble planting through those. So we, we try to put out um, the P and K fertilization before um, the the cover crop starts to, to run up in the spring so so it doesn't leave tire tracks. <laughs>